Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update. And my big headliner for today is that I've started launching the satellite rockets from up in orbit. This isn't something you absolutely have to do, and in fact I think in my previous uh, 0.5 run through I didn't bother. But I've decided that it's worth it this time, and it's because it's in theory is quite a bit cheaper. Because in order to launch a rocket from up here in space, all you need to do is make the rocket over here. And now this is fairly expensive and requires most of the exotic ingredients. So it's it's five holmium solenoids, it's 20 aeroframe scaffolds, 10 rocket sections, 50 rocket fuel, and 50 iridium plates, which to be fair, it's not a small amount of stuff, but it does save you an additional 90 rocket sections, 50 solid rocket fuel, and uh, some other stuff besides. I can't remember what else goes into a rocket, but there's quite a lot of stuff. So, I think it's probably slightly cheaper. In theory, and it seems a lot nicer anyway to be launching a rocket from up in space, because it you're doing all of the heavy lifting with the space elevator instead of instead of from the ground. So in th it, uh, even though I struggle a little bit to justify it in, in terms of pricing because it uses all of these exotic materials, I still feel it's quite a nice thing to do anyway. And so this means we've now got a, a belt here with the, the satellites coming in along it, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Let's start from the very beginning of this system and run through the changes that I've made. The first part is a sort of a bit of a negative really. So if we look over here down on Norvis, this is where the rocket, the old rocket silo used to be. So I've pulled it up because, well, I don't need it anymore. And so we've been, I've been able to get rid of that and a lot of the belts that were feeding it and some of the things that were being fed into it. But I do still need to make the satellites and I feel that doing them down on the ground probably makes sense I um, and use, using all these machines here because it's all already set up and it's going to be a lot easier logistically to transport these things up because a, a satellite is actually a fairly expensive thing to make who'd have thought it so if we look at this you can see it takes 50 advanced so you, well you, you, you can read the list as well as I can and quite a lot of those are significant proportions of a stack um, and so turning all of that into a single navigation satellite which takes up one stack in the train feels like it's probably going to be quite a saving I was considering making them up in, in, in space, but also taking all of these over to the area where I'm launching the rockets from, the probe area, would also have been a bit of an effort. I'd, I'd have ended up perhaps making the satellites on the big column of construction and then having to ship them from there, and that would also be a bit of a faff. Admittedly, not that shipping them from here isn't a bit of a faff though, so we've got all the stuff being built here. I've also stopped shipping the, ra the radars in by, by bot and started making them on site. That was nice and easy. I mean, I've got to the point where pulling just four things off the bus and shoving them into, a, into an assembly machine, that's, that's child's play. It, 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 it's hardly even worth mentioning. But what is a little bit more interesting is down here, well, so we're feeding the satellites. When they're made, they're fed out onto this belt, which then flows down all the way down here and uh, to here and then all the way along the bottom of the bus uh, miles and miles and miles and miles and miles is this belt I think here follows it follows along here round here and then gets onto this drop down here drops all the way down and then these are all loaded into the train that takes them up to the probe station but you'll, you'll notice that this belt is very very empty now uh, there's something but there are some down here and this is because the satellites are quite expensive so I don't want to build up hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of them to fill up this entire belt so, so, so they stop being passed through. Instead, we've got a, a set of belts along here that are monitoring the number that, monitoring the number on them. So these these ones up to about up to this one at the top are reading how many satellites are on them and feeding them off to the network here. This is then this signal is then being passed up through all of these pylons onto the main red and green networks that run around the entire base. And these we haven't well we've we've used the green network quite a bit. This tells us what is in all of the stations around the base, and so we know we have apparently 4.1 million oil available, 800,000 sulfuric acid, and so on. So this is what's waiting in all of the stations for pickup. The red cable is a bit more flexible. Um, Tristan tells me this is essentially available for any signals that we need to pass around for other reasons. And so, I've used that. That's passing it up to wherever the rocket construction is here. And then coming down the red, red cable here and being fed in over here. And so, this inserter only runs when there's less than 20 satellites on those pieces of belt that I was showing you a moment ago. So when there's 20 satellites on these belts, and that means these belts are mostly full. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there's, there's room for 
24 satellites on here, which they're currently, if we look on here, 24 satellites, because that's full. And we've also got a few more on the underground belt here. But when this gets to at least 20, then it stops any more being fed in from the other end. So there'll be maybe four or five on the belt that have been made and are just making their way over when the, when the signal goes up like that. But it will stop it feeding through the hundreds and hundreds that I was worried about. And so we've just got a little a little supply of them on here. And then we've got a signal coming down as normal from the, uh, from the, from the probe area up in space saying, well, sending down all of the bits and pieces it needs. And we can see that one if we look at uh, this pylon. So you can see at the moment we have lots, lots of stuff. Um, uh, but we have 23 satellites available up there over the amount that I'm requesting, which I think is about 20. So we are saying that we have we have a little bit of an excess up there, but that's fine. Uh, a bit of an excess, it, it doesn't matter. We're going to get through them eventually. I don't have a problem with that. But we can see here that the positive numbers are the things we've got a slight excess of. The negative numbers are the things we're requesting more of, and therefore feeding through here. And eventually the probe area train will come back down and it'll start to fill up on these things and if there are any satellites needed it would take them as well and so this system whilst it doesn't keep the satellites down to a very very small number being used there's a, there's a little bit of buffering in here the buffering is of a few ten rather than a few hundred and that's a number I'm quite prepared to have sitting around here the other part of that, so when you launch one of these rockets, the reason I've been launching so many of these satellite rockets is when they finish, they spray out a load of um, satellite telemetry data. And previously, that was being brought from here by another belt that went down onto the onto the bus somewhere. It was brought over here and then fed up over here into this into, to, to make the uh, the gold science cards over here. This is the uh, this is the rocket science, I think, uh, and that's be, that's being made over here and then shipped up to space. In the new system, they, those are then poured out from the silo up in space onto this belt, which passes them up here and round and up, and then dumps them into the into this train up here. And that I've just noticed has broken the system, which is a little bit unfortunate, uh, <laughs> because this train is set to depart when it's empty. And because I'm now loading the satellite telemetry into the train for in order for it to take them back down again. That doesn't work, so I'm going to need to reprogram this. Perhaps I'll um, I'll read the contents of the train, then subtract a million uh, satellite telemetries from it, and then tell the train to leave when everything is zero or less. That should that that'll work. It, it it's not it's not a serious problem, but the train is train is currently broken because I didn't think that all the way, didn't think my cunning plan all the way through. So that's a shame. Uh, but the idea is this train will uh, will load up on some of these uh, on some of the satellite telemetry data and take it down to Norvis. And I'll show you that in a moment. But for now, let's let's demonstrate having the uh, the rocket silo launch just because I can so over here we have these um, these satellites coming in all of these these readers on the on the uh, belt up here are to make sure that we don't send an excessive number down here because again I don't want to have a huge number of satellites buffered on the belt so up here we're watching for there being less than two satellites on the belt and if there's less than two it'll release another couple it'll go back up to more than two and then the belt will um, and then the belt will and then this piece of belt at the top will stop so we always make sure there's, there's only one or two satellites on this belt along here. It might occasionally be three actually if it lets two through at the same time. But basically we're, we're ensuring that the, the belt stays with only only a couple of satellites on it. Um, so again we don't have enormous numbers of them buffered. Down here I can go actually I want you to run and we'll see that'll pass through into there. And it's watching for the number of... we're, we're transmitting the, the quantity of um, of satellite telemetry up from the ground. So as you can see at the moment, we have 1,100 satellite telemetry down on the ground already. So, and we're only telling this thing to run when there's less than a thousand, uh, when it's less than zero, because we're also subtracting a thousand from it down on the ground. So when it goes below, yeah. So if there was none available, it would say minus a thousand. We'll always launch a rocket when it gets down to when it gets sub sub zero like that. And so the rocket launches like that. We get a, a spray of a hundred of the satellite telemetry coming out like this. Those all flow up. They'll go into the train and the train can then be dispatched to go down to Norvis. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I shall do this part manually. Uh, so once the, uh, once the satellite telemetry is loaded onto the train, I can then trigger it manually to go to downstream top. And this means that the train will now head off to go and collect some, uh, some some of the dump resources. And this is getting a little bit ahead of myself. I wasn't really going to talk about this until tomorrow, but we'll, we'll watch this train go around just because I've triggered it, and it's, it's always nice to see the systems working. So as you can see, it's heading off to the right, which is away from the space elevator, but it is heading towards the spaceport, where there are plenty of, st of, tra of uh, stations that have a load of junk that needs to be taken away. So it'd whiffle around here like this, and then go into the first station, which in this case is Big Rid, where it looks like we just have enormous quantities of uh, rare metals to get rid of. And actually there is some other stuff in here, including a load of belt bits and pieces, because uh, Mark has been tidying up his, um, his factory down on Big Rid and just getting rid of all the bits and pieces he doesn't think he wants anymore. 
So now train will leave this station, this downstream station, and it'll head off and head down to Norvis. Straight down the elevator like that. Then, as, as all the trains do, it will then stop off here, or nearly all the trains do, it'll stop off here, and it'll unload everything onto the, onto the belts here. Including the, um, yes, there we go, in including the uh, satellite telemetry data. That then comes down these belts. I won't watch it the whole way along, but it'll get loaded into one of these trains, and then that train will take it off up here to the general uh, tr uh, scrap handling or junk handling area, where it'll get unloaded, and then there's an extra output here for the satellite telemetry data, which will pass it up up here, put it into this train, and when this train gets to at least a thousand of it and, and a little bit of inactivity, it'll then depart from there and bring it down over to the main bus area where we're doing uh, so the satellite telemetry drop, where it'll be passed down here and put into this chest. We're then reading the contents of the chest, and that is where the signal is coming from that tells the uh, satellite launcher at the top whether to run or not. As you can see at the moment, we have 2100 in here, uh, minus 1000 here, so it's sending a, sending a signal of 1100 up to, the, up to space. That's greater than zero, so we're not launching any satellites unless I do it manually. And then those, as I say, can be turned in, into the uh, into the gold science packs and shipped off. Now I notice that some of these don't seem to. Have, this one doesn't seem to have the right um, productivity modules in it. However, I suspect it's not going to run a great deal because it's sort of somewhere in the middle of the chain. But uh, so never mind. That said, let's poke it with that, and there we go. We'll, we'll, we'll upgrade that. And this rather neatly brings me on to the next step of what I've been doing, which is upgrading all of the uh, the productivity modules in all of the science production down here on Norvis in order to try and um, get, basically in order to boost the productivity to the best we can. And so I put all these in and I thought I'd better beacon them as well, you know, just to keep the machines running quickly. Because having these productivity modules in them does slow them down quite a bit. We can see if we look at this one, that this, run, this is running at uh, 0.25. It's running at quarter speed, uh, which is uh, the absolute slowest they can possibly go. Whereas the ones that are then been beaconed and now back up to running at three times uh, three times crafting speed, which is a, a two and a, almost two and a half times the normal speed for this sort of machine. So that's what that's why I put that in there. I also wanted to put in productivity modules for all of the ingredients that go into them, but the furnaces and the modules, they all count as, um, they don't count as intermediates, so we're not allowed to productivity module those, which is a bit of a shame. I've done the same thing with the other um, other types of science cards as well. So over here you can see we're making the, uh, the we're making the military science, for example. Um, I've put productivity modules in all of these. these uh, what are the two things we're making here? So we've got, it's been so long since I've done this. So here we're making the biter research data in order to turn that and the blank tech cards into military tech cards. Uh, and so I, in order to again, in order to reduce the amount of resources we're using for this, which isn't admittedly it's not a particularly large amount, but I feel that we might as well try and be efficient. So I put productivity modules in all of these. Over here again with the, uh, the the blue tech cards, these are now fully productivity moduled. The red circuits are being made with productivity modules. I think glass probably is as well. And I hope the blank these blank tech cards are. I I, I should probably check that once I go through. Also, all of the um, all of the circuit components over here are being made with productivity modules. Yep, over here same with the green tech cards. Now this does mean these ones are running extremely slowly. However. It seems to still actually be fast enough because all of the or because the belt is still full. I am going to need to keep an eye on this and make sure that we don't run out of all of these tech cards. And if we do, it's just going to be a case of coming along and dropping beacons in for all of them to make them run a bit faster. But for now, that's all sped up. And the all, all that these ones use is the iron gear wheels, and that one I've also productivity moduled as well. So that's going to reduce the amount of iron we use a little bit. Red ones are also fully productivity moduled. Ah, now these ones have run out. So I am going to need to either put it... And there's, this is not too severe. We can... Since it's only come down to here so far and we've got the buffer that goes all the way down to the station but if it's getting shorter already then I think it is going to be a problem later so I'm definitely going to need to come along and put in a, a productivity module here. Over here yes also productivity module the blank data cards and again these are running a bit too slowly but conveniently if I come along here and I put in one of the wide area beacons like this it's going to completely cover this entire area so that's going to be absolutely trivial to upgrade. That's going to be really really easy we can get um, we can get speed modules affecting all of these over here here now and things will just run brilliantly. If I use the module inserter on it, I'm sure that's going to give it um, the appropriate uh, modules. Yes, here we go. Well, some of, some of them anyway. So now as you can see, actually it's only using tier twos, but to be honest, I think that's going to be fast enough. These are now running at uh, 
the, the, the sort of speed we wanted all the other ones to be running at. It's going to 145% faster than it was before uh, when it had no modules in it, and that's going to be plenty. As you can see, the belt is the belt is almost immediately filled straight back up again. So yeah, I think that's going to solve all the problems here. The next step after this, if we wanted to improve the uh, product production systems even more, would be to take all of the all of these science things like this and move them away and put them in towns. And that's what I'd be doing if this was a vanilla playthrough, because vanilla playthroughs you tend to find that you're using massive quantities of science packs, you're ripping through them to incredibly high speed because in order to make vanilla challenging you need to go for very very high science per minute because you don't have the more more the really really advanced science packs whereas in space exploration because the later science packs are so much more effort and so much more difficult to build you don't need to do science quite as quickly the challenge comes from doing the advanced sciences at, at any speed at all rather than doing the basic ones at very very high speed so just keeping them on the bus would be absolutely fine for the for the levels of throughput that we need Additionally with modules, Tristan's been out on Njord, where, and I spoke about this a bit last week, he's been upgrading all of the productivity modules in all of these machines that are uh, generating the, the Holmium for us, and make, making everything run much, much faster, and he's, 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 it's, it's been somewhat of a success, he's managed to, up, he has now been out there with a lot more modules, and so now there are, there are speed modules in all of these, there are productivity modules in all of, the, in all of these chemical plants, over here, I think I saw some blinking lights, yes, there's still some, still some flashing, oh, no, that's just, that's just, um, uh, inserter upgrades. So now, yes, all of the modules have been upgraded, and so that is probably going to have given us a bit of a bump on the Holmium production. It's still, it's still a bit slow, um, but it is, it is going to have given us a bit of a bump. And if we look at the Holmium, if we look at the production graph, yeah, you can see that before we were making them at about 80, 80 to 85 per minute, and now we've gone up to 122 per minute. And I think quite a lot of that is going from to be from the improved modules. Although, Tristan does say he has also built a new mine, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself, so we'll, we, there, there's been some, there has been some further expansion as well. Uh, we'll, look, we'll look at that a bit later. This, this, at the moment, we're just talking about the modules. <laughs> the next place I want to look at is Kothar, and this is where uh, Mike has been making the Iridium. And it's... I mean, the Iridium is being made, but as I've been saying in some of the videos, it, we, we are still trying to... I think we're still trying to use it faster than it's being produced. It's kind of hard to tell, because when the... When the production is not overwhelmingly faster than the than the uh, than the consumption, you tend to get the consumption happening in bursts whenever a delivery of the of the supply comes through, and so it's quite hard to tell whether how much of that is filling up buffers, how much of it is dealing with backlog that was required, and how much of it is actual production. But Mike has extended things up a little bit here, so he's got as you can see the trains are coming in at a very, uh, uh, quite a nice rate here. He could make them come in a little bit faster by putting in a few more signals up the uh, up along here. And that would mean that the next train would pull in slightly quicker when the previous one leaves. But to be honest, looking at this, we do seem to have a steady stream of trains coming in. So I suspect that's not gonna help all that much. Uh, let's see if another one has arri arrived before this one finishes emptying. Okay, so this one has emptied and it now can't find a mine to go off to. So actually, at, the, at this point, the 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 uh, the unloading here is not the is not the limiting factor. Now it's, it's a sort of a shame because if the unloading was a limiting factor, there are a number of things he could do to speed it up. He could replace these inserters with uh, the superior ones. He could replace all of these uh, and the warehouses with perhaps green or even purple loaders that would be pulling pulling the resource out much much faster and dumping it straight into this warehouse and then allowing it to pour out on blue belts down here. These would all help he could then uh, uh, he could as I said he could put signals in all the way up here to make the trains switch over a little bit quicker but at the moment the, the limiting factor appears to be the mining rate or at least the mining the 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 rate it's being take brought away from the from the stations so let's go and have a look at one of his mines there's one over here which is called new mine that's a, a good name for it so over here oh it says new mine, but it's just straight up not working. <laughs> okay, that's not a very good new mine. Um, it has 23 million iridite in it, but it's is it because it's not having any acid delivered? Yeah, the acid is being the acid has been delivered to here, but I don't see any pipes bringing it over. So perhaps if we came along here and we said actually we would like to pipe this through, please. Always away, you find you find a little gap and the pipes get stuck in it. So we bring this over here and just link it in over here somehow somewhere. Oh, it's probably it's meant to be down here. Sure. All right. Let's let's finish this off for him, and uh, then we can we can show him what he what he what he's been doing wrong. <laughs> I, I know he likes it when I point out his mistakes. There we go. So that'll get this mine running. Let's go and find another mine to see if we can find the actual problem with this. That one's copper. That one's iron. Here we go. Iridite. 
So yes, the the, the problem is that is is the rate it's, is the rate it's being dug up at. I notice he's filled this one up with um with productivity mo no. I notice he's filled this one up with productivity modules, which I mean. It is it's sort of a good thing in that it means you'll get more iridite out of the mine, but it's also a bad thing because it'll slow the mine down quite significantly. Have we built that yet? Not quite. Um, so I'm 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 I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. Was this one over here? As you can see, iridite because iridite is such a hard metal, which is what we need it for for ver making various things like spaceships and you know materials for testing and that sort of thing. These drills all run relatively slowly. Uh, so they're not digging up, digging up a huge amount. It's also not a massive patch, although we have pulled up quite a lot of it from around here by the looks of it. So we are, yeah, there's, whilst there is still 13 million in it, it's coming up relatively slowly. Maybe it'd be best to put speed modules in. But, okay, a train has arrived now, but as you can see, it's very, very quickly, um, it's, it's, it's arrived at the wrong time, to be honest. The, tr the train shouldn't arrive until there's enough um, ore, ore to completely fill it up. But these these warehouses have gone empty. So there's another problem. But in th the, th the theory is that we should have enough coming out to fill these mines. We should have enough mines that the mines fill up. And then enough trains that there is always there are always trains dropping off here. And enough extra mines for the trains to then clear off to rather than sitting here like this. So... There is potential for quite a lot more throughput here, but it is going to need more mining to be done. Um, he does have a lot of a lot of mines available because he's freed up this much sp so much space on this planet. But it's it's another thing. It's just going to need a bit more, a bit more expansion, a bit more mining, and then and then a little bit more and then a few tweaks to the drop off station, not this drop off station, this drop off station, in order to get that bit more iridite out of it. Now I might be being slightly mean to Mike actually because I've just noticed his other note says that he has been putting in more iridium or iridite mines. Uh, so um, yeah, so maybe this is one he just hasn't quite finished yet, and that's why the, the that's why the pipework wasn't wasn't going across there. I only specific another new one over here. So yeah, he is he is putting in additional new mines. So I guess it's call it we'll call it a work in progress. There's another one up there and another one there. There are yes, there are lots of mines scattered around the planet. It just still needs more and more and more and more of them until he gets it coming in quickly enough. Another possibility, if he, if he still can't get enough out of it uh, with one with one station, even with the trains coming through a bit more quickly, is to perhaps have a second uh, iridium drop off uh, station. It'd be a bit tricky to squeeze it in, but maybe 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 it would fit in the middle of here. Uh, it would actually yes, it would if he then ran the belts just straight round and all into this in, into this one. Because at the point where you're putting in, you're using purple belts to unload. You kind of only need one of them probably. The other problem is that uh, the iridium doesn't stack very high. As you can see, it only stacks up to 10. So when each one of these trains comes in, it doesn't bring in all that much iridium. So it's, uh, it doesn't last for very long. Potentially, another thing that he could do is on-site crushing. And that was something that somebody was suggesting to me during the, um, during the stream for the beryllium processing. We to do the crushing on, on, in, in the mine. Because as you can see here, when you run it through... You, you crush your iridite, and so that means for every eight stacks of iridite you, cr you pu pull out of the ground, if you crush it, you can turn it into one stack of crushed iridite. And so that would mean a lot more, you'd be able to transport stuff a lot more efficiently by the trains, and that might help quite a bit. He's still going to need a lot more mines in order to get the throughput we're looking for here, but it would, it would help with the logistics quite a lot. And... There would also be a fair amount of sand that would need to be sent over in the trains as well. Um, probably in the same trains as a sort of sushi train. But we've, we've done that system before. We know how to do that. So, yes, my feeling is that if he, if he starts crushing it on site, it's going to make the system quite a lot more efficient uh, in, tran in logistically. And then he might not have the problem with just trying to bring quite so much over by train. Still going to need a lot more mines, though. And now, having talked about everyone else so in this video so far, let's have a look at what Mark has been doing over on Big Red. So he's gone in and he's made some major improvements to the uh, Vitamelange processing. Uh, and so you can see over here, I think this is the... Yes, this is the old, this, I think this is the old system where he's got a row of, a horizontal row of crushers along here that are taking in the, is it, this is, yes, this is taking in the uh, vitamelange and crushing it down into vitamelange nuggets, then using basic chemical plants to, uh, to do the next stage, um, and so on up the up the system uh, furnaces and and so on the new one is this 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 system over here i think yes we're taking yeah we're taking the vitamelange here into these blocks of um, of pulverizers and now he does, he's needed more pulverizers now because of the improved, new and improved system but all of that can then be just fed into a couple of the advanced one of the advanced chemical plants and one of the advanced furnaces and that is enough to keep up with these entire six um, six machines over here so actually, oh no, this is going from core processing. So he's got one machine. <laughs> right, this is even 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 neater or even more compressed. So he's got the flow of the um, 
Vitamelange core chunks coming in here. It's crushing the core chunks. Then the Vita is the Vitamelange is coming out here, going straight into this pulverizer, which de which is also capable of dealing with it, passing the Vita nuggets out up here, where they can go into the chemical plant and be passed through. And then the the stone that's being produced from the um, uh, from, from the pulverizer, well, from both pulverizations, is then being sent up this belt, going into here to be turned into sand to be used in the process. And presumably all the other trash is coming out. Yes, the wood is coming out here and being disposed of. And the core chunks are coming out of here and also being disposed of. And all of that is then presumably fed off and being put into, into, this, into the trains somewhere over here to be taken up to space. So yeah, he's got uh, lots and lots of stuff to be got rid of. But yeah, all of that then flows up, up over here along with the... Uh, oh no, I take it back. No, no, I, t I take that back. I, um, I scrolled too fast and didn't look at it properly. So the wood is being brought over here. But the uh, core, yes, the core chunks are being split out here, then pulverized down into the core fragment, into, into the ores, and then passed up along here. And also, he's using the, um, he has a supply of barrels from somewhere. Goodness knows where that's coming from. Um, okay, he's making steel over here from iron ore that's coming out of here, rather than from the core mining, but okay, sure, why not? Um, he's then he's making barrels there. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a long belt bringing the barrels over, but that's because he needs to... Ah, yes, he needs to make large quantities of vitalic acid and put that into barrels. That's why he needs loads of barrels. But then the extra barrels, spare barrels, can then be brought over here for getting rid of any, the oil and the light oil and the um, pyroflux that all comes out of the core mining and other processes. And then all of that can be disposed of down this belt as well. So that's a lot of stuff being passed through here, but uh, no, nah, it makes a lot of sense. It all, all, all comes together quite neatly at the end here. He did say he'd been designing it up in the uh, in the blueprint sandbox, uh, so that'd be over here, I guess. Yes, the, here we go. This, 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 these are his designs. So, as this is the one I've just talked about, where we're getting the um, the the uh, core chunks coming in and then processing it all down into in, into into whatever this one, which what's this step called? Uh, vit mostly vitamin and spice and a little bit of extract. So that pours out onto the belt over here. Not sure why this has stopped running. He's prob probably because he, he deleted some of the infinity stuff before uh, copying it out. Then over here, we've got the, uh, this is the purification area where we're taking in the Vita Spice and turning it into Vita Extract. And this again has been switched over to just using the advanced chemical plant, so it runs much, much faster with a much smaller number of machines. And, so, and, you, can and you can put in more productivity modules as well. So you, as you can see, we're turning a bit of the Vita Spice and a, little bit, and a very small amount of the extract into, mo into more of the extract and also a bit of the Vita Spice as well. And we've got that just being passed around and it's, yeah, we, we, we're doing, uh, prioritizing with, the, uh, with, with uh, splitters down here which is nice and, neat, nice and simple, just feeding it straight back in again. And now we have a nice, healthy supply of, of the extract being poured out over here for uh, for, for use, uh, for, to be shipped out and used everywhere it's needed. And this is all needed up, up here in space in Norbit, because a spaceship will come from Big Red and land here with large quantities of the extract and hopefully the spice and the reagent and the uh, and the vitalic acid as well. All of that will get unloaded and put onto a train over here and, uh, and, and can be passed over to the... Uh, to the science area over here, as, as we've said before, and apparently Mark is still sort of trying to work through all the spare vitalic acid from here. Once he's done, once he's got rid of all of this, then I think I think that's when he's going to be able to get the trains, the, the, the spaceship, to run a bit more the way he wants it to. I think it's still sort of trying to deal with some of the um, some of the excess from here. But uh, what, what, what have we actually got in here? Yeah, there's still quite a lot of vitalic um, uh, vitalic acid here. Maybe we should just dump all of this out into um, into a massive tank in order to get get it out of the system. But what it what he has done is he's got rid of the ludicrous mark belts that were coming from here and running all the way along here, along this um, this scaffolding that is the evidence remaining of what it, what it, of what he had done. And then up here into the science area, all the way up to the top here, and being passed out into this area. That has now been replaced with a standard sushi train system. Which at the moment is bringing the uh, the extract, the reagent, and the scrubbers along here, or at least should be should be and will be when everything is running nicely, and we'll unload these a lot them along here to be made into the science packs as as per usual. Uh, now it looks like because we've got oh no we we do have a little. Maybe we do have a little bit of the reagent available. Uh, we've got a, yeah, there's a little bit down there. So a little bit of it has made it through. And so we've made some of the, uh, the Bio 3 catalogs. Those are being fed down the belt here to go into the labs down here at the bottom. And so that is how we're managing to do mining productivity at the moment. Because that takes 14,000 Bioscience Pack 3s. Now, okay, it's slightly less than that because we've got the, um, the research imp uh, at productivity improvements. As you can see over here, we've got a productivity boost of 95% there. And we've got another fifteen percent here, so we are getting more than double what we're uh, what we're paying for, if you like, um, 
at least out of this lab. So, yeah, we, we only need, actually need 7,000 of each of these science packs, but that's still a lot. Uh, so it's going to, is it, whether we're going to be able to finish this with the amount of the science we have at the, available at the moment, well, we shall see. You'll have to come back to on the next stream to find out, won't you? And the next stream will, as you, I'm sure you're aware, will be on Monday. So next week is, is the sort of the slightly funny changeover week. There will be a stream both on Monday and on Thursday next week. So make sure you come along for both of those because we're going to. It means we're going to make twice as much progress next week as you, as we usually do. So that should be um, should be quite good. I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do about the catch up videos next week, but you know I'll find some some way of dealing with them. Um, that's, but, so that's but that's going to be Monday stream and Thursday stream. On Wednesday, I shall be doing the XCOM stream as normal. Uh, that will be carrying on with the XCOM 2, going out, fighting the aliens. Hopefully things will go quite well. They've been going well recently. Will they continue to go well? You'll have to come along and find out. Then Friday and Saturday uh, for, for next week, I will also be releasing some catch-up videos and maybe one on Sunday as well because there'll be so much stuff that we've done. There's going to be a lot of Factorio content next week. And then the week after, that's when the schedule changes completely and Factorio streams will continue to be on Thursday XCOM streams will move to Tuesday, and the videos will, uh, the Factorio videos will probably come out on Saturdays and Mondays. Um, but that's a little, a teeny bit up in the air. We shall see. There is, of course, also plenty of other stuff on the channel if you want to go and have a look through the uh, through, through the history. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. And I will see you tomorrow for the second half of this video, and then on Monday for the stream, as as discussed. So as before, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.